Amendment. Amendment to H.R. 114A, offered by Ms. Del Bene. Strike section 607. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read, and the gentleman is recognized for five minutes on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, H.R. 1148 is another misguided enforcement only approach to our broken immigration system, and it would need, needlessly attack reforms that ought to be bipartisan priorities for all of us. Specifically, it blocks the administration from implementing a November 20, 2014 memo that was designed to support American high skilled businesses and workers, as proven and workers as well as proven entrepreneurs. My amendment strikes this language to preserve these important initiatives. Not long ago, I had the privilege of sitting down with a group of talented, hardworking individuals who came to this country under a variety of circumstances, but all had one thing in common. They were living proof of a broken H-1B program. I spoke to one woman who came here with her husband who had been hired by a technology company. She has a master's in computer science that allowed her to hold a prestigious engineering job in the aerospace industry back home, but was unable to put her expertise to use here in the United States. It's alarmingly alarming that exceptionally talented individuals like her are in these circumstances when our foreign competitors are allowing spouses of high skilled immigrants to work. So not only are we failing to take full advantage of the talent, we are making U.S. companies less attractive to the workers that they need. In the 21st century global economy, we cannot afford to lose a single competitive advantage. The administration's changes would capitalize on the talents of entrepreneurs and help U.S. companies attract and retain the best and the brightest, something we should all have an interest in. Um, U.S. companies across the nation would benefit from my home state of Washington to California, Texas, Illinois, Georgia, Virginia, and New York. My amendment would also allow increased job portability of high-skilled workers, which is critical to ensuring that wages and job opportunities for all workers, including U.S. workers, do not stagnate. Many H-1B workers who are sponsored for an employment-based green card must wait in line for many years or even decades. And while waiting in line, some workers will want to accept a promotion or change employers. To do this without jeopardizing their immigration status or their pending application for a green card, these workers have to make sure the new job is in the, quote, same or similar occupational classification as the job for which the immigration petition was filed, end quote. However, because of the long-term failure, the USCIS, um, the, their failure to issue guidance as to the meaning of same or similar, workers are often hesitant to accept a promotion or to change employers for fear of taking the risk that such a promotion or change employment would not be considered same or similar. Instead, they remain in their current job long after they've outgrown the position. New guidance will help maximize the talents of such people and to raise wages for all workers. Finally, using the National Interest Waiver to facilitate green cards for accomplished entrepreneurs will create jobs and spur growth. The Immigration and Nationality Act permits foreign nationals who hold advanced degrees or have exceptional abilities in the sciences, arts, or business to uh, obtain EB-2 immigrant visas. The statute allows qualified individuals to self-petition for a visa without an employer, but only if the government determines that doing so would be in the U.S. national interest. Neither the INA nor the implementing regulations de define the term national interest, so DHS has significant leeway here. To help our country retain successful entrepreneurs who have already demonstrated the ability to create jobs and generate substantial revenue, the department intends to issue guidance pertaining to the circumstances in which it would be in the national interest for an entrepreneur to be able to self-petition for an EB-2 visa. Again. This is the kind of common sense reform we should be encouraging, not blocking. The changes preserved by my amendment are supported by both tech and venture capitalists. It's no secret that the tech industry hoped that the administration would have gone further on November 20th, but the memorandum that today's bill seeks to block is nevertheless recognized as a step in the right direction. For example, the National, Ven National Venture Capital Association's president, Bobby Franklin, said, quote, in the absence of a congressional action to fix our broken immigration system, we appreciate President Obama's leadership on this important issue by targeting solutions to help foreign-born entrepreneurs build their businesses in the U.S., 
President Obama has made clear he understands the important role the entrepreneurial ecosystem plays in our economy and is prepared to do all he can to ensure the U.S. remains the global hub of innovation, end quote. There is no question that our immigration system is broken, and I believe most of us in this room would welcome the opportunity to vote on comprehensive reform. In the meantime, we must do what we can, and I urge my colleagues to support my amendment and allow the important reforms the administration has outlined to take place. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield back. The Chair thanks the gentlewoman. For what purpose the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. The recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I must oppose uh, this amendment. I appreciate the gentlelady uh, offering, but Section 212 of the Immigration and Nationality Act allows the DHS Secretary in his discretion to parole into the United States temporarily under such conditions as he may prescribe only on a case-by-case -case basis for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit any alien applying for admission to the United States. Congress added this limitation on use only on a case-by-case -case basis for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit in the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act of 1996. The House report stated that this limitation was intended to end the use of parole authority to create an ad hoc immigration policy or to supplement current immigration categories without a congressional approval. Uh, that's, worth re that's worth rehearing again. It was intended, this was what the House report said, is to uh, intended to end the use of this parole authority without congressional approval. This bill defunds, as the House did in January, in no a November 20th memo issued by DHS Secretary Johnson that it does exactly what Congress forbid in 1996. The memo permits DHS to grant parole status to certain investors, researchers, founders of startup enterprises who supposedly have been awarded substantial U.S. investor financing or otherwise hold the promise of innovation and job creation. In doing so, the memo blatantly creates an ad hoc immigration policy and supplements current immigration categories without congressional approval. Though the memo through the memo, the Obama administration is abusing the parole statute and taking action that the 1996 Act made clear only Congress can take. It is yet one more example of the Obama administration making an end run around the Congress. This committee will have ample opportunity to consider high-skilled immigration reform when we take up Mr. Issa's Skills Visa Act. That is the appropriate time and place to consider immigration policy regarding investors, researchers, founders, and startup enterprises. In fact, the Skills Visa Act, as passed by the Judiciary Committee last Congress, created an entirely new green card category for foreign entrepreneurs. H.R. 1148 defunds the Obama administration's November 20th memo that abuses the purposes of the parole statute. The amendment we are now considering strikes that provision of the bill. The amendment thus endorses the administration misuse of the parole power and administration action in the contravention of the intent of Congress. I therefore urge all of my colleagues to oppose this amendment. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Question occurs Mr. Chairman, on uh, what purpose the gentleman from Michigan seek recognition? I want to uh, support the Delbini Amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, we we're, we're have under discussion of whether allowing the administration to implement its memorandum to capitalize on the talents of entrepreneurs and help companies attract and retain high-skill amendments. And my point in supporting it is that it will increase job portability for high-skilled workers to better protect American workers. What's wrong with that? I think it's a great idea. Uh, many uh, H-1B workers who are sponsored for an employment-based green card must wait in line for many years and I hate to say it, even sometimes more than one decade. Who wants that? While uh, waiting in line, many workers will want to accept a promotion or change employers. And in order to do so, without jeopardizing their immigration status or their pending job application for a green card, such workers must ensure that the new job is in the same or similar occupational classification is the job for which the immigration petition was filed. Now, I, I, I think this, this is a, a bit too much. I compliment the gentlelady uh, on her amendment and urge its careful consideration by uh, uh, every member of the committee, and I yield 
to the gentlelady from California, Ms. Lofgren. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I listened carefully to what my colleague from Georgia said about parole, but I think it's important to note that what is um, the bill would do is far broader than the parole issue that he referenced. <clears throat> it would appear to um, eliminate anything, including those efforts being made subject to rule um, from going into effect. And let's just talk about what the practical effect of some of this is. One of the things that is definitely in the weeds but important is uh, OPT, Optional Practical Training. That is proposed to be extended in time as part of a connection with um, graduate and postgraduate uh, education in STEM fields. Uh, why is that important? I'll tell you, you know, recently I was out in Silicon Valley, my home, and I think the original thought I had when OPT was extended for STEM uh, PhD recipients was that it would give time for the very messed up H-1B process to unfold. But what in fact had happened for a lot of these uh, hot shots was that it gave them enough time to line up their venture capital and found their companies that then created jobs. And that's an important thing. This bill would prohibit that. I can't believe that that's something that we would want to do. It's definitely not in the national interest to do that. It's been much celebrated <clears throat> that the um, spouses of H-1B visa holders under the memorandum are permitted to accept employment. Why is that important? Well, for, for two reasons. One, uh, because of the backlogs in uh, uh, permanent residence visas in some categories, you can have someone in an H-1B visa category for many, many, many years. Uh, and while those many years of waiting for a visa number to come up are going on, um, the uh, spouse is unable to work. Well, that's not competitive. I mean, there are places in other parts of the world where spouses are permitted to work, and I'll tell you, you've got some hotshot has options. They don't have to work in the United States. They could work in other countries. So we've got to be competitive, and what the uh, administration has done is to make us more competitive uh, for top talent internationally. This bill would prohibit that, and I don't think that is a good thing for the country. So these are some specific examples of what has gone well. It's obviously, it's not everything we need to do. Only legislation can do that. But there are some significant improvements that were made in the high-tech arena. This bill would undo them, and I think that would be a mistake. And so I thank uh, you, Mr. Uh, Conyers, for yielding and yield back. Question is on the amendment. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment Mr. is not Mr. agreed Chair, to. I ask for a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Goodlatte. Mr. Goodlatte votes no. Mr. Sensenbrenner. Mr. Sensenbrenner votes no. Mr. Smith. Mr. Shabbat. Mr. Shabbat votes no. Mr. Isa. Mr. Forbes, Mr. King, Mr. King votes no, Mr. Franks, Mr. Gomert, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Poe, Mr. Chaffetz, Mr. Marino, Mr. Gowdy, Mr. Gowdy votes no, Mr. Labrador, Mr. Labrador votes no, Mr. Farenthold, Mr. Farenthold votes no, Mr. Collins, Mr. Collins votes no, Mr. DeSantis, 
Ms. Walters. Ms. Walters votes no. Mr. Buck. Mr. Buck votes no. Mr. Ratcliffe. Mr. Ratcliffe votes no. Mr. Trot. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop votes no. Mr. Conyers. Aye. Mr. Conyers votes aye. Mr. Nadler. Ms. Lofgren. Ms. Lofgren votes aye. Ms. Jackson Lee. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Pierluisi. Ms. Chu. Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Gutierrez. Mr. Gutierrez votes aye. Ms. Bass. Mr. Richmond. Mr. Richmond votes aye. Ms. Del Bene. Ms. Del Bene votes aye. Mr. Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries votes aye. Mr. Cicilline. Mr. Cicilline votes aye. Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters votes aye. How is the gentleman from Texas recorded? Not recorded. The gentleman from Texas? Mr. Poe votes no. The gentleman from Pennsylvania? Mr. Marino votes no. The gentleman from Florida? Mr. Deutsch votes aye. General Lee from Texas. Ms. Jackson Lee votes aye. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Gomert votes no. The clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, 10 members voted aye, 15 members voted no. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there any other amendments?